principles of a compression test are that the engine sucks in air, it compresses it, and then pushes it out. So the first thing is it needs to be able to suck in air or have a clear method of doing that. So if you're going to do a compression check, you want to have no obstructions to the air. So we're going to open the throttle plate. very simple way to do that is with a screwdriver or something that you can stick down there and open the throttle plate. Therefore, there's no obstruction in air being able to rush into that intake. If you happen to have an older vehicle where it's easy access to the spark plugs, then you can just simply do a compression check with a gauge down there. But many times on a lot of the newer vehicles, it's a tough job just getting to the spark plugs, getting your instruments down there and so forth. So a shortcut that gives us a very good look at compression is called a relative compression check. That's done externally and with a lab scope. Basically what we're going to do is be looking at each cylinder and how it comparatively contributes to compression. Here's how to set it up. You're going to need a low amp current probe. and We turn it on. Now I'm going to set mine at 80 amps. In many videos you've seen us use 20 amps for fuel pumps and other things. But we're talking about a starter being able to turn this engine now. We're going to do some more amps so I'm going to use 80. Over at the lab scope we're going to turn on our scope meter. I'm going to plug my low amp current probe into the top on trace number one. Now in a compression check, in addition to making sure that there's no obstruction in air, you also need to make sure that the car won't start. So you want to disable the ignition. You want it to crank, but not start. We we'll go over to our lab scope and we're going to set this up. I'm going to be on trace number one. We're going to set it up for 40 amps. Choose 40. That's the most mine will show. And you actually need to do coupling AC. You want to do that if you're going to be doing a relative compression check. Usually in automotive work we focus on DC, so why are we choosing AC coupling now? If you remember back, DC is direct current, it's either on or off, 12 volts or 0 volts, where AC alternates above and below. So by choosing AC, we simply are blocking the DC signal from view. Now if we use the DC signal, our waveform would look like this. We'd only see that which was above 0 volts but by choosing AC it blocks the DC and now we can see above and below the zero line. Since pressure, which is what we're looking at now, could go above or below zero, we need to see above and below zero. Choosing AC's coupling simply blocks DC from view. We're all set up, we hit OK. We take our low amp probe, you want to zero it. Now you want to clamp this around the wire, the big wire, going to the starter. This is your negative wire. We want to go to the positive wire, and I'm actually going to clamp it on down here, going to the starter. And now we crank the engine. Now I'm going to come back and stop this, and we're going to play our little movie backwards. You can see right here is where it begins. We actually start cranking the engine. This also It's always going to have a little bit of a distortion right at the very beginning. But then as we look at these next few patterns, the important thing what you're looking for here is somewhat of a comparison that all looks normal. In other words, each one of these is actually going up and down. And if you drew a line somewhat across here and somewhat across there, it would be just about even. In other words, each cylinder is contributing about equally. Now what I'm actually going to do is start this again, but I'm going to take a spark plug out. So I'm going to take a spark plug out of the hole and repeat the same test. Now we're going to stop it and play it back. Now if you look right here by comparison, 
you see that we've got a drop out in compression. If you, if you count this as cylinder number one, then there's two, three, four, five, six. It's a six cylinder engine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another drop out. So again, you have a drop out. Now that is actually not cylinder number one, that that is the cylinder that is not contributing to compression. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So by doing this, you do not have to, doing a relative compression check, you do not have to get access to the spark plugs and take them out. You're doing it electronically with a lab scope, and you're seeing here that you have at least one cylinder not contributing to compression. It's just like in all compression checks, we put a gauge in each cylinder and you compare the compression. We're doing the same thing, but we're doing it electronically and relatively. Now keep in mind, a relative compression check is not an actual compression check. It is relative to amperage, because what we're looking at here is amperage, not pressure. When you put a gauge down in the spark plug hole, you're going to read pressure. But in a relative compression check, if you look right here, this is where I took out the spark plug. Since there's no spark plug, there's very little resistance in there, so it did not need a lot of amperage. But that is that cylinder on a six cylinder. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and back to one. So these all required more amperage to overcome the resistance. The spark plug was out, very little resistance. Spark plugs are in, more resistance. So relative compression check is compression relative to amperage. This test helps you so that you don't have to actually get down to each spark plug and pull them out and put a gauge in. So that you can tell by this that you have one cylinder relative to the amperage that the other ones are requiring. These cylinders right here have very little compression.